Hello lovely people and welcome back to the channel. Now normally when I do these videos I usually tend to be a fair few days after the events that I'm talking about that has taken place. But in this case I'm doing it almost immediately because to me that the whole scenario looks pretty obvious. What am I talking about? Well I'm talking about the announcement today that Rishi Sunak um, went and met with President Macron of France and that they have announced um, the next package in the joint UK France working in terms of dealing with the issue of the small boat crossing the channel. So before I tap into that, let's just let's focus a little bit on the positive stuff. And here I am talking in negotiation terms. I'm going to try not to get too involved in the politics. My interest here is in the negotiations because it's very clear that Sunak went to Paris to negotiate with Macron for some kind of solution. And I'm going to talk more about that in a bit. But the positive bit, the positive bit is that Sunak, for the first time in the long time, a British Prime Minister is trying at least to act like an adult in the room. And you could see that difference with the response from Macron. Macron was positive uh, in terms of communication um, with Sunak. And he had made a very specific point of saying that Sunak's predecessors were basically useless, obstructionist types of people. And finally, there's somebody that you know he can actually talk to who wants to deal with the issues seriously. And this is positive. This is a change of tone. And I would say this is very welcome. You should never want any leaders of any government to act like spoilt little children. And of course, Sunak doesn't need to do that. He has a Home Secretary that can do that for him. So he can be the one that turns up and acts like the reasonable grown up, the reasonable leader, having sent uh, the obnoxiously, arrogantly antagonistic Suella Braverman to soften things up for him, probably. Maybe that's me being too cynical. But that is a well-known well negotiation tactic, you know, the bad cop, good cop type routine. So, so it is possible that Sunak is playing that particular role. However, that's perhaps where the positive note ends. Now, I'm not going to... There, there are quite a lot of different things that probably went on at that particular summit. So I'm only going to focus on one narrow bit. And the one narrow bit is the announcement that the UK government is going to give the French government £500 million to cover the next three years to deal with the small boat crossing. That's quite a lot of money. So what is the UK getting for that? Actually, more specifically, what is France getting for that money? Well, according to the announcement, the French will have 500 extra officers. They will have perhaps some new surveillance gear, some new drones and uh, that sort of thing to help detect small boats, all paid for by the British taxpayer. And Macron was basically going for this is what he wanted. He went into the summit determined to secure significant financial concessions from the UK. There's a little bit more. And the little bit more is that supposedly this money is also going to pay for a detention centre in France. And it does raise the interesting question is what on earth is France going to do with the extra detention centre? I mean, presumably they'll detain refugees and asylum seekers in it. But on what basis? You know, one assumes that the asylum seekers are legally or legitimately in France and legitimately attempting to get to the UK. So on what basis could the French detain them without trial, without charge, without uh, due process? That would be basically the same problem at the UK. So having posed that particular question, then there's another small bit of detail that is quite revealing, which is that this detention centre won't even be built until 2026. So, of course, after the UK general election. So suddenly the scope of this negotiation now swings into quite sharp focus. 
Sunak has gone to Paris for some kind of deal, something he can show people back in the UK. What he had gone after is a political deal. What he has not done is secured any kind of actual solution. Because let's be honest, if the UK decided to itself spend 500 million on extra officers at a UK based detention centre, that would probably be more effective at actually dealing with the small boats problem. But the UK has not. The UK has given that money to the French. And so the French will be the ones getting extra police officers, extra facilities and so on, all paid for by the UK. And ironically enough, at the same time as the UK police force, UK border force and so on, are all chronically under-resourced and underfunded. So really, the only conclusion we can take away from this particular bit of negotiation is that Sunak has basically given Macron everything he has wanted. And in return, Macron has played Sunak's political game. So he's acted all friendly, he's promised action, knowing full well that actually he probably doesn't even need to deliver very much. Just try and get the numbers down a little bit, act a bit humane, to, you know, look after some asylum seekers, all paid for by the UK. And then two years tired of a general election and the whole thing will be made redundant anyway, as a new government will take, you know, will presumably be in charge and will not be wanting to perpetuate this complete and utter disaster. So what this means is this will be presented to the UK media as a success story for Sunat. But it doesn't take much digging into it to really realise it's anything but Sunak has completely capitulated to Macron's demands. He has paid an awful lot of money for what is going to be very little in the way of return. And it won't in any way in itself solve the problem. Because it, it might reduce to a certain degree or mitigate the problem. Or maybe even the numbers will go down anyway for other reasons. Who knows? But this 500 million that the UK is spending won't solve the problem. And it, Weirdly enough, if the UK was determined to actually carry out its illegal migration bill, or you know the provisions in there, then that 500 million would be more effectively spent breaking international law, arguably. Instead, they're kind of asking the French to break international law, and I very much doubt the French are going to do so. So the French are just doing a bit of a Boris Johnson, which is crossing their fingers behind their back and saying, yeah, we, oui, monsieur, we shall do this thing. Of course we shall, really. And we'll speak to the next adult that comes along in two years time. So those are my thoughts on this particular deal. Um, unlike anything in politics, this is all about perception, not necessarily about reality or actual practice. And for those who are, you know, like me, who are familiar with negotiations and what successful outcomes looks like, we look at this and it's very hard to see anything measurably positive out of this. This is just politics. Nothing useful, nothing practical, and worst of all, a monumental expenditure of UK taxpayers' money for what is very much political showboating. But there we go. Those are my thoughts on today's particular announcement. And I hope you found this interesting. Please do like, subscribe and comment below.